Okay, so I recently did a video on the basics of reading live data, and I feel like it really wasn't that clear. So, starting at the top, that's your engine coolant temperature, 199 degrees, mine's at right now, the fans will be kicking on soon. Um, then, second in line, you have your short-term fuel trim, bank one, sensor one, and then the second's bank one, sensor two, the third is bank two, sensor one. And then you have your short and long term average percentage. And pretty much for these numbers, any kind of short term fuel trims, you want to see them bouncing back and forth between positive and negative 10% one way or another. Um, if it's way too high, positive number, like say it's 10 positive, then it's adding fuel, compensating for air coming in that shouldn't be, like a vacuum leak, stuff along those lines. Uh, but you generally want to see it fluctuate. I'll rev the engine a minute. See, it only went to 0.2 right back down. Um, then, you have RPM. These are, this is just extra stuff that's good to have. Um, you see it's idling right at 7, 750 ish. Uh, then you got your vehicle speed sensor. I'm not moving, so it's zero miles an hour. And you got your intake air temperature, which is 127 degrees. Uh, mass airflow sensor. Throttle position. This is a good one to have if you suspect your throttle position sensor might be bad. And that's not a foolproof way to test it, but you can see it go up as I rev watch. And it right back down and then your oxygen sensors these in my opinion are one of the most important things to have because those tell you the air to fuel mixture that's going on inside and it monitors it so you won't wind up blowing your engine up but these you want to see bounce back in between 0.1 and 0.9 um, 0.1 being lean Point 0.9 being rich and after you first rev the engine you'll see it go up to point 0.9 then once I let off it'll go back down to around point 0.1 that's what you want to see um, here I'll do that real quick so there's a bit of lag right there there goes 9, 8 and then it'll eventually go back down 5 and then back down to 0 this isn't the best uh, scanner ever, but unless you're, you know, at like a dealership or a high-end shop, you're not really going to have access to a really good scanner. So this is just a at-home one that I have, probably what you'll have, and I'm trying to show you, you know, things that you might have so you can understand, you know, what's going on in your car a little bit more. Uh, most people just buy ones that have check engine light capabilities only, and while they're good, they're not... You know, you want to know a lot more things that's going on, especially if you're having issues. Now, let me go back and I'll show you about reading codes. Because a lot of times, I've found in my personal experiences, when you get a code, 99% of the time it's not... Like, if, I, if this code right here was for an EGR valve... I wish I've had that happen. A lot of people just go ahead and they replace the EGR valve, but I want to say about 99% of the time, it's not the actual EGR valve. For me, it was the vacuum valve, and I even had to replace the purge solenoid for the vapor canister. And uh, so a lot of times, you know, don't just jump the gun, actually diagnose it, make sure, you know, what you're replacing is what is bad. For me, I'm about to clear this code in a minute but I wanted to show you everything so the computer will go back to all the factory uh, settings after I reset it but I just got this code about a week ago and as you can see it's PO734 gear 4 incorrect ratio and what happens when I shift from third to fourth is it'll bounce from about 24-2500 rpm and it'll shift into fourth and it'll be at 2200 RPM. So I'm not getting a smooth transition. It's not a rough shift. It's not slipping really. It's not grinding gear or nothing. Um, it is a four speed automatic. And then it has this button down here. You could click right here. 
and it tells you the list of possibilities of what could be wrong. Low transmission fluid level, dirty transmission fluid, faulty transmission, shift solenoid, opener short in the transmission hydraulic control circuit. Um, I've looked into this. I believe it to be one of my shift solenoids and depending on if this code comes back, which I know it will, I'll be opening up the transmission and replacing said shift solenoid. So I'll more than likely have a video on that soon. But it's just like the very basics of what you can do. If you have a high end scanner, you can do so much. Like I could actuate the sensors in here. Like if I wanted to, like back to the EGR valve, if I wanted to activate the EGR valve, I could do that just by sitting in the car hitting a button. Now this scanner doesn't have those capabilities, but it's still nice to have. So there'll be a lot more videos like this, repair videos, uh, performance upgrades, stuff like that. If you like these kind of videos, please like, uh, subscribe, share, and I really appreciate the views. Um, I just made this channel not too, too long ago, but there will be a whole bunch more content, so stay tuned, and thank you, and I'll see you later.